Hello, Dominic Herbst here with Restoring Relationships. And we're here to talk about being torn asunder in your marriage. As a matter of fact, in Mark 10, 9, one of the verses where torn asunder is used is what God therefore hath joined together, let not man put asunder. And being torn asunder, according to many different definitions, is a place of great distress, turmoil, and torment. I want you to consider one definition from the Longman Dictionary that is split to be torn and rent, that is ripped and split open, violently ripped apart. That's what your heart feels like. That's what you're experiencing within your soul. And then another is forcefully separated into pieces and that that often comes from terrible tragedy. You know, when you're struggling in your marriage in a place where you're hurting so deeply at the hands of the pe person you love the most and you expect is reciprocating, it, it p causes within you the greatest distress and turmoil that you will ever know in this earthly life. You might be being abused uh, when your protector as your spouse becomes your predator. It, that doesn't unravel you. You are not normal. There is nowhere to run. Where do you go? That is your protector. And he's become predatory in the abuse that he's pouring out against you. Are you subject to ridicule and scorn, constantly bombarded with phrases that are laced with cursing against you, putting you in a position to believe you have no value? and that you, your dignity is ultimately stripped from you because the enemy, what he does is he rides those curses into your mind and then he penetrates into your mind with these echoes. They come as your thoughts, but they make sense to you because of the way you're being made to feel by the one who's to be most precious around you and is hurting you so deeply. Have, has your spouse betrayed you in the most painful way imaginable by leaving you for another? Uh, the abandonment and the betrayal and what you're feeling. You not only lose all the provision of what he represents or her, but now you have to deal with the betrayal. The enemy will try to convince you there is nothing you can do. That is a lie out of hell. God has given you the opportunity to know him in ways that you never would have had this terrible tragedy not happened. So I'm asking you to listen to what the Lord is revealing as to the remedy, as to the plan of action that he wants you to walk in, in the spirit realm. The enemy will try to get you fixated on trying to change the person who's doing this to you, your spouse. And God is saying, no, you have to leave your hands off of him. You have to leave him to God. And you believe that the grace of God that is, has, has stopped, has, has stopped pouring out on you. And that's a lie of the enemy. He, his grace is there, even though you do not see evidence of it outwardly at times upon you and upon your marriage. So God is saying, I want you to look specifically, totally, and exclusively to me because I am dealing with your spouse. I am going after him. I am in pursuit of what he or she is doing that has caused this uh, split in your marriage. It may be a spouse who's at home, but he is completely detached from you in a way that it's as if he's not there. He's a ghost. Or, or she's detached from you in a way that you, you feel as if you're not going to be able to draw her heart to you, that she's being drawn or distracted in other directions, in other ways, for reasons that you may not be aware of. So you may have been abandoned through divorce or death of your spouse, and now you're alone. And whatever the case may be, the answer that God has set forth in the scriptures is for you for this very hour. And you may have felt that you've lost everything, your safety, your security, your protection, your provision. I mean, those are the things that are necessary through life. Safety, security, protection, and provision. Just the material needs that have been now squandered as a result of what is happening in the, in the breakup. And I want to give you the understanding of this great truth from the Hebrew law that applies from the kingdom of heaven to you and I right now as believers in Christ. And I trust those of you that are listening and will listen to this 
are believers in Christ where you have settled forever in heaven the fact that you have surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and you have received him as your personal savior for the forgiveness of sin by the uh, cleansing blood that was spilled at Calvary for you and I to cleanse the sin that only God could do through his son, Jesus Christ. So I want to uh, ask you to consider this name, the Kinsman Redeemer. Some of you may be aware of this. Let's look at it now deeply as its application unfolds for you right now in, in this uh, great distress and torment of your broken marriage. The Kinsman Redeemer is the story of Ruth and Boaz and Naomi. Naomi was the mother, uh, the mother-in-law of Ruth, and Ruth lost her husband which was also Naomi's son. But Ruth had, or Naomi had compassion on her daughter-in-law, Ruth, and she looked for a way or someone who would step in to make provision for her now that she had lost her husband. And this man, Boaz, Boaz was brought to her. That literally, it was a, a, a happening of the Holy Spirit of God that he had set up the chance meeting that occurred between those two. And Ruth, uh, poured out in humility to him with regard to her need. And Boaz took care of her. He had compassion for her and he wanted to make provision, but he was not the one next in line to be the one to care for her. Because according to the Redeemer passage of the Hebrew Bible and the rabbinical tradition of the law is a person who as the nearest relative Boaz was a distant cousin, but he was not the nearest relative uh, to Ruth when she lost her husband. And typically that one is charged with the duty of restoring the rights or the provision of the person who lost it. Ruth lost everything when she lost her husband. She wasn't even entitled to what his assets were until it was established in the law. But here he is, and he's representing this man, Boaz, who comes in this brief story within the scriptures, he's represented as all the provision of what Christ brings to you and I. And that's what I'm presenting to you now through the Holy Spirit's truth and wisdom, that you look to the Lord Jesus, not as your Savior this day, which he is and always will be, but as the, his, your kinsman redeemer. Now, let me share more of this so you understand. The kinsman redeemer is the one who has the goal, who has the purpose to purchase back that which was taken. Sometimes it meant for someone taken in slavery, and the kinsman redeemer came and purchased back the right of that person to be free. Did not Christ do that on the cross of Calvary? Well, Boaz needed to be able to purchase her, meaning his assets were now going to make provision for Ruth. And he loved Ruth, and he ultimately married Ruth. And, he, and yet he, there was great sacrifice in what Boaz did. And that's what's important to know, that in redemption, there is always sacrifice. And you as the victim's spouse, you feel as if things were taken from you that were not that should never have happened. That should uh, that that because of the the hurt or the pain or the sin of another, and now you are left destitute as a result of that person not being there for your provision. And so the Lord Jesus is asking you to become, if you would let Him become your kinsman. That is one who wants to be related to you, and as a child, a daughter of Christ. Uh, uh, in this marriage situation, he now wants to be your kinsman redeemer to replace everything that you're now at loss with in the estrangement of your husband or the full loss of your husband, even in divorce or death. So you hear his invitation. He's whispering to you. And do you know the magnitude of his invitation? Consider this, that everything in your life has torn you asunder. And it has meant great loss to you as the spouse, whether it's the rebellion and folly of your spouse or because he or she is withdrawn and destitute, now so are you. He may be sick with infirmity or even mental anguish and disorders that he cannot help that have overtaken him. And he's under the bondage and he needs to be set free. But because he's in bondage with these disorders, now you find yourself in a place of bondage and captivity because you're at loss to know how to make provision, to know how to go on. He may have left you for another. 
And now because of that, you don't have all of his help with the household, the needs, uh, and the children. He, uh, and your children are left without a father. Your finances may be depleted. And this is the role of the kinsman redeemer. Your heart is also broken and you're filled with despair. So you have been attacked virtually at every level of your being. You're attacked at spirit, soul, mind, and body in mental anguish, filled with the darkness of oppression and mental vexation, and you feel there's nowhere to turn. So now is the time for you to see how Jesus, your Lord, are we too, uh, Are we losing? Okay. Folks, here's what we're doing. I'm going to finish since I got this far, but we have static, and what we're going to do is I'm going to finish because I'm almost at the end, and I want you to hear the end, but we will do this at another time when we fix whatever this static problem is. Any prayers you want to send up would be appreciated. But I say to you now, as you look at Jesus as your kinsman redeemer, that your Savior, it, it, that his arms are open to you, he's waiting for you to draw close to him and ask him to become your kinsman redeemer. You are his precious child. He is your Abba, Father, ready to restore all that has been taken from you when you were torn asunder in your marriage. Consider these three principles, that the widow or wife in the case of the Redeemer is protected from social and economical marginalization or abuse. And that's very important because you're standing alone. You're without protection. You are without cover. But the Lord is saying, let me be your cover at this time. Let me be your cover. I can cover you at all levels. I can make provision for everything that uh, you've ever imagined. And the covenant land of the inheritance, the estate of, of the person who was deceased is now gonna be protected and restored to you. Only God's gonna transcend that through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the child born to the widow will be considered the son of the one who is already gone. God will normalize what does not feel normal. He will bring to you a sense where you can walk through this regardless of your situation. As your kinsman redeemer, Jesus becomes your protector and the, protect, the protector of your broken family. In 2 Chronicles 16, 9, it says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth that he may show himself strong on the behalf of those whose hearts are right before him. As your kinsman redeemer, Jesus will become the affectionate, loving, and pursuing father to your children. That's in Romans 8, 15. Place them up for spiritual adoption. Here's what it says. For the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear. Actually, it says we no longer have the spirit of bondage again to fear. We have the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Spirit of adoption means we're adopted into the family of Christ where he is our Savior, but he's also our affectionate Papa. In this case, he also becomes the provider as a husband to you as the broken spouse from what you've experienced. And then we have uh, the, the children being placed into adoption. Uh, moms and dads left behind, you can place your children through prayer through proclamation, I, I ask you, Lord, to adopt my son, my daughter. Oh, you, know, you still have your governing authority over them, but in purposely placing them into adoption, you may have dedicated them, and that's a form of placing them into the adoption of the Holy Spirit. Go further, be intentional about this, and say, Lord, that means your protection needs to be around them, even from themselves, because in their bitter hearts for what has happened here, the enemy is going to use that to drive them to doing things and happenings that should not occur. So uh, place your children up for adoption. As your kinsman redeem, uh, a redeemer, Jesus will make all provision, material provision, including uh, necessary, exceedingly abundantly above what you ever thought or imagined. You receive not because you ask not. So receive, go for this in Christ at the throne of grace, ask for it, and Christ will give it to you. Ephesians 3.20. Now pray with me in, in presenting yourself into the hands of the kinsman redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, we pray that your Holy Spirit hear us now 
and saturate our hearts with your presence and that we would humble ourselves before you, God. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we embrace and we take hold of all of the benefits of what the kinsman redeemer, Jesus our Lord, will provide to us during this time and season of great pain and difficulty in the loss of our precious spouse by whatever means, even if they're sitting right next to us, we have lost their heart. Oh Lord, bring the power of your spirit to transcend and complete within me as the spouse left behind all the losses. Take all those losses and restore into me the great blessings from your throne room in heaven for me, our children, and also pour upon my spouse that the hope of this covenant could yet be restored. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Folks, I apologize. We will get this taken care of. I trust something went out to you that might be helpful. And look for us next week uh, taking care of this. God bless you now.